Hey guys, Derek Craig here with oilfieldbasics.com. Today we're going to be going over a co typical conventional style wellhead setup. And this is something that's especially going to be beneficial for any students watching. Uh, this is really going to help you to learn uh, what, what all is included on a wellhead uh, when you walk up to it in the woods. Uh, and this is a perfect example. That's essentially what this is. So let's get started. All right, so one of the first things uh, that needs mentioned here is you, is not at all your responsibility or it is not okay at all to fool with any of this. Uh, you never know exactly how much pressure a well can have on it, uh, especially if it's old and abandoned and in the woods. You don't know how much pressure is on it. The gauges are almost just as likely to not be working as they are to be working. Uh, so you have to be careful trusting gauges. Uh, don't need to be opening and shutting valves or anything like that. Uh, but I just want to help walk you through uh, so you understand. So if you get a job um, like I did where you're just weed eating around this, as you can see, uh, that's pretty typical of a job around here. Um, weed eating around these, you know, the parts and when you're talking to pumpers, uh, people who maintain these wells, uh, you can talk about things and, and you know, that this way you'll know what, what's the casing side, what's the tubing side. Etc. So this is a pretty typical, this is a need a pump jack well, and I've done other videos on this well, so check them out if you want to know more about the pump jack, how it works, the production equipment on site, etc. But this is just a quick overview of the wellhead itself. So, on a pump jack well, typically the very first thing uh, that you're going to see, this is the stuffing box. So again, that's where when the polished rod works up and down through the wellhead, uh, that's where it's sealing pressure and keeping any production from coming out. And that's actually just grease, don't be alarmed, that's not oil. Uh, that's just grease because you have to keep it lubricated because literally metal on metal or metal on rubber, um, there's rubber elements in there that seal up against it. So there's a lot of friction, so you gotta keep it lubricated well. So, but this whole first part, uh, this is the tubing itself. So that right there is literally a joint of tubing that you can see. And it's screwed in here on top to a T, or yeah, to a T. Um, and you can see that here's one side of the tubing, and then there's another side. Uh, this is the side that it's being produced through. Uh, that's a two inch flow line right there coming off. That looks like probably two and three eighths inch tubing. Uh, that runs all the way down into the well and down to the reservoir. Uh, here's where it meets the surface. And so right there, there's a ball valve, so that's just so you can shut in the well, uh, et cetera. And of course, ham hammering units are just helpful for if you need to dismantle any of the wellhead or um, change out anything on, on the wellhead. And then here we happen to have a gauge, and you can see the pressure on the well. Uh, in this case, it's relatively low. It probably hadn't been pumped for a while. Um, but that all depends on the well. And then right here we have what we call a back pressure regulator or a Baird valve, whatever. There's multiple names for it across the industry, but basically it's a back pressure regulator and what it's doing, and this isn't on all wells, um, but it's definitely believed to help those that have, have it. Um, basically what that does is it's set to a particular pressure. The pumper sets this by screwing in the pin on the end of it. And basically what that does is make it so that there has to be so much pressure coming from the tubing side of the well for it to be able to flow into the separator and or whatever the production equipment they have. So basically, if you don't have a back pressure regulator, what can happen is that you can get gas coming up your tubing and that's gonna, uh, that, that gives potential to gas lock a pump. Um, that's just not something you want. You typically want just straight fluid coming out of your tubing on a pump jack unit uh, or, or on a pump jack setup where you have a rod lift as your artificial lift. Uh, you typically do not want any gas coming out your tubing. Uh, that's just going to interfere with production equipment and other things. So that's what that facilitates. So that basically means that it has to have a certain amount of pressure to overcome it. And that's going to make gas want to go around the outside of, of the pump and the outside of the tubing and come up the casing. So the casing is, is this larger part here. This is four and a half inch casing. Again, um, this is casing right here. It runs all the way down into the well. This is where it comes and, and forms the wellhead. And there's pressure seals um, that seal off right here around the tubing. Um, so this casing is going to be producing from the tubing casing annulus. Um, so this is typically the casing on a conventional well is what is perforated uh, to your formation. And that's where your production is going to literally enter the well, way down hole, but in this casing string, the four and a half. And same with an unconventional well nowadays with the five and a half inch casing. That's typically the size they use on unconventional wells across the shale plays in the U.S. But anyway, so that's typically where you're going to have your gas 
uh, flow from. Now you can, depending on the strength of the well and depending on how hard you flow it, et cetera, depending on how you have your production equipment set up, you can indeed bring gas or liquids to surface through your casing side. And that's gonna come down to operator preference, et cetera, uh, and economics and all of that. Um, Typically in a pump jack setup, you want your liquids coming out the tubing and you want your gas coming up the casing tubing annulus through the, through the four and a half inch casing right here and then coming out and being produced. So this well in particular is actually set up, um, or this pump jack, I'm sorry, this pump jack is set up, that motor back there is literally runoff casing gas. So the gas from this well is fine enough that it can actually power the engine. And so that's what this is. So this is the outlet um, to the four and a half as well as this side. This side is actually going to um, a regulator and there's a pressure gauge there. You can check your, that is your casing pressure right there. That's your casing pressure. And again, there's not much on it. It probably needs pumped. Um, anyways, that this is where your gas would flow back to your to your motor. And there's a regulator, a couple of regulators uh, to make sure that it doesn't overpressure the motor and something blow out. Now, uh, the gas that you're actually going to sell, uh, because this well does sell gas, um, it's going to go, there's another ball valve there's a check valve. So this is basically ensuring that the production off of your tubing, when it comes down, because it, it goes and it joins a the same line into, there's only one line typically that goes from the wellhead itself over to the production equipment. So uh, there's no reason for two flow lines, uh, really. You just join them and then let the separator do its work uh, because they're not perfectly separated anyways here at this wellhead. You're going to have some gas probably in the tubing um, production. You're probably going to have some, maybe some liquids or drip gas or something on your, on your casing side. So anyways, um, the check valve is going to help make sure that when the liquid production comes through and attempts to go down into the line, to go over to the production equipment that it's not back flowing uh, like that. Now this well does actually have a back pressure regulator too on the casing side. So the same idea as we talked about with the one above it, and if it would indeed happen to go by it or, uh, anyways, basically that, that check valve is ensuring that production does not flow back into the well and into the casing side. Um, and again, this stuff can be organized a lot of different ways. So you can have check valves in different spots. I'm not sure that that would be the most logical place for a check valve. Um, it just really comes down to operator preference and how they set up this well head. So anyways, beyond that check valve, you have another regulator. So that's basically, um, those, that's not on every well head. Um, and not saying any of this necessarily is, uh, just beside the, the basics here, but, um, that in this case they 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 don't want it they only want a particular amount of gas flow to be coming off this well at one time they don't want it to exceed a certain flow rate so it doesn't like kill itself out or something so uh, or or um, flood itself or so that it doesn't get liquid loaded. Anyways, all this is going to join together in the common line and then go over to the production equipment. It's going to go into the separator first thing and then it's going to go into. Um, the sales line which is being metered at the red box. And last thing to note right here, you can hardly see it um, just because of all the weeds, but uh, right here is the, the top of the probably 9 and 5 eighths inch casing uh, that they would use for either, probably the surface casing I think in this case. Um, it really depends on how many. Anyways, this is the next string of casing. Uh, that's the casing head for the next string essentially. Um, and the rest of them would be underground. Um, now on an unconventional site, typically you have a large cellar around the wellhead, so you don't have none of, the, <laughs> none of this and you have a workspace and you can literally get to everything. Uh, but a lot of times on unconventional, or on con conventional wells, you don't have um, that pleasure. But there are, uh, that would be the next string of casing. And there should be a valve somewhere if I dug around there in the weeds um, to where you could monitor the pressure on that uh, casing string as well. All right, so there's the basic of a conventional wellhead. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video and please check us out in the other videos and if you're more interested to learn more about um, the drilling of a well, production of a well, etc. Especially with the newer con unconventional uh, shale wells across this, the U.S., uh, check out our courses oilfieldbasics.com. Like, subscribe, comment. We appreciate you and, your, and viewing this and check us out in the next video.